Hello, Internet. My name is Taliesin. This is so dumb. And no, this is awesome content right here, okay? <clears throat> Hello, Internet. My name is Taliesin. And I'm Evertel. And welcome to the Weekly Reset, Taliesin and Evertel's Wondrous Wisdom Show, giving you all of the wow knowledge because... Knowledge is power. Look, I'm sorry, Taliesin, but this is unbelievably stupid, even for you. Why are we doing this in the dark? Because everything looks better in the dark. And I mean real dark, yeah? Not your stupid, actually quite bright, not really dark dark. This, this is the real deal. And I think you'll agree, everything looks amazing. Hmm. I'll admit, you're looking a little better than usual. But okay, how long are we doing this for? The whole show. No! Oh, go on. No! Just a little bit of the show. No. Fine. Let's get on with the news. There is much to be done. This week was the week of Legion assaults and of the Mage Tower. US and EU realms worked tirelessly, funneling some 90% of their resources into building the Mage Tower, making the Command Center and the Nethershard Disruptor feel more ignored than Bill Cosby when he offers to buy the next round. And who can blame them? The Mage Tower gives you portals all around the Broken Isles. Oh, what an amazing building. Oh, and that's not all, but the chance for an extra IP item when you kill a boss. Ah, uh, yes, now I can totally see why everyone was so keen on that tower. Oh, and if that weren't enough, the Mage Tower Artifact Challenge. Yes, the Mage Tower Challenge. The community was going absolutely nuts for the Mage Tower Challenge. The anticipation was palpable. The forums were awash with excitement on this scenario, this solo boss fight to gain a new artifact appearance. And Blizzard did say it was going to be a challenge, didn't they? You're going to have to earn it the hard way. Oh yes, at last! A proper, real challenge that's actually hard. Because I don't know about you, right, but I am sick to shit of Blizzard dumbing this game down with their constant catering to casuals and scrubs. At last! Some content for people like me. People who are genuinely good at the game. I can't wait to get in there and get that awesome appearance and, and just strut round Dalaran showing everyone what a baller I am. In fact, I haven't even seen the artifact appearance from my class yet, but hopefully it's just in the shape of massive balls, because that would be fitting because of my massive balls. But it's not going to be easy. Good! I'm sick of this easy ass content designed for people who are frankly dog shit at this game. You're going to want to invest in getting the best gear you possibly can. Well, yeah, obviously, I mean, the less good players are going to need to be able to outgear it later on, I get that, but that's not something I'm gonna have to worry about. Oh, maybe I'll even make a video about how I totally nailed the challenge, like a, like a guide or something, so that other people can totally copy my awesomeness after they've wiped on it themselves. <laughs> Fuck you, Blizz. Yeah, because it turns out that shit is fucking hard. A combination of knife edge mechanics and pretty steep power requirements meant that the vast majority of players who set foot inside that mage tower scenario did not come away with the anticipated artifact appearance three days later when the towers crumbled. Now, you might think, mightn't you, that this may result in the odd ego being bruised because, you know, humans are funny things, aren't we? You can tell me that challenge is going to be hard as much as you like. You can tell me that I'm going to want the best gear to try it. You can insist that you don't expect people will complete the challenge the first time the tower is up. You can say all of that, Blizzard, and I am listening. I'm nodding. Look, I'm nodding. But inside I'm thinking, yeah, that shit is for everyone else. I'm going to one-shot that fucker. So I went into the forums expecting maybe for there to be a bit of salt, I have to admit. So imagine my surprise when I found that the forums were actually really calm. Everyone was having a really good time. There was a great feeling of support, and no, it was a shit show, obviously. Is this a joke? How is this remotely logical or fair? Why the hell would you make content very gear dependent and skill dependent? The Mage Tower Tank Solo Challenge is literally impossible for me to complete right now. I have put many Legion Full War supplies into the construction of the Mage Tower. I want to be rewarded for this. If I can't get a fair chance at receiving the new artifact appearance before the mage tower is destroyed, I will end my subscription. And my own personal favourite. Challenge is not about making things difficult! Now, of course, of all the shit shows we've ever had on this show, and we've had a few, this is the one that was more predictable than an underwhelming DC movie. Because no one wants to be told that they are not as good as they think they are. It makes them angry. 
and irrational. It makes them say things like, Challenge is not about making things difficult! People have many problems with these scenarios, but the, the most common complaints boil down to two key points. One, this challenge is gear dependent as well as skill dependent. But we knew this was going to be the case before, of course. Remember, you're going to want to invest in getting the best gear you possibly can. But lots of people were still surprised that you couldn't realistically do this challenge in 870 gear and are complaining about the fact that this challenge doesn't scale to item level. And oh, the irony of this being an actual argument after last week's eye level scaling shit show is just, it's so deliciously sweet that it could give you diabetes. Means that this is somehow nullified the challenge as it is purely a gear check to which I say, bullshit. Part of the challenge of an RPG has always been tied to the collection of gear to defeat difficult challenges. And the collection of gear is always important, even to the best players. There's a reason why mythic progression guilds run multiple heroic split runs in the lead up to fighting for world first on a new raid. It's because even the best players in the world need the best gear available to them to meet the biggest challenges, because that's how an RPG works. If you don't like that, play chess. No, seriously, play chess. Chess is great, you should play chess. But you don't want to play chess, do you? Because there's like hardly ever any dragons in chess or guild chat and there's no ERP in chess either and frankly I can see your point. But this affected me. My 894 discipline priest wiped 70 times to this fucking challenge and did not beat it and if I'm honest I didn't even get close. And it was brilliant! It was great fun! I eventually convinced myself that the gear requirements were just beyond me and I, I was feeling okay about my total failure but then that twat Hiruma Red X went along and beat it with his 896 disc after again 70 odd attempts and proved that I was wrong. It is totally possible. I'm just not as skillful or didn't have the will or the focus that he did and he fucking deserves every bit of kudos he gets. He went against what every guide from better geared players told him to do and after 70 tries found a way that worked for his gear and the problems he specifically was having. And that is what I call rising to a challenge, motherfucker. I highly recommend you watch this video, whatever your class, because it might just inspire you to change your approach. Number two, people don't like the different specs have to take part in the same challenges. How can the same scenario possibly be an equal challenge for, say, a Fire Mage and a Fury Warrior? Surely every class should be given their own unique challenge. <laughs> You're gonna hate me for saying this. I don't really agree with this either. If you honestly think that each spec having their own challenge would have stopped accusations that some challenges were easier than others, then welcome, because you've obviously never played this game or come into contact with any members of this community before. We hope you enjoy your stay. You won't. And to be perfectly honest, it doesn't really matter if a mage is going to find the challenge easier than a warrior, does it? What matters is that they don't find it easier than another mage. And there's even advantages in getting the raw end of the deal. Everyone knows that if you're a frosty K who's beaten your challenge, then you, my friend, are extra specially badass and seriously well the fuck done. Not like those scrub guardian druids who basically just get given their skin just for turning up. And again, I say all this as a disciplined priest, and may I just remind you, we have a DPS challenge. Don't you come moaning to me until your challenge is literally for the wrong role, okay? But it is possible. Fuck you, Hiruma Red X. Seriously, in my opinion, the Mage Tower challenge is the most fun new feature in WoW since Mythic Plus. And actually, maybe you do have a point about your gear check and your duplicate scenarios, but it's fun anyway. And isn't that what it's for? It's a challenge that you're always going to feel good about beating whenever you manage it. If the tower ever gets built again, that is. It'll be interesting to see how long it takes second time around. And that is the end of the long Taliesin talky bit at the beginning of this video, Evertel. Well, so- oh, No, 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 wait, wait, it isn't. Because the other biggest story of the week is that we finally got our Legion assaults, where whole zones at a time were taken over by the Legion for special world quests, culminating in a special boss fighting scenario. Everyone was really excited about this too, because we needed it for our Pathfinder achievement so we can fly. People logged in after reset, ready for some big fat demon killing action, and they were greeted with nothing. Because it turns out the assaults are on a timer and on an 18 hour timer. So one comes on initially at random, is available for six hours, finishes, and then 12 hours later, another one hits for six hours and so on. Now in the US, this didn't seem like such a big deal because the first assault happened in the early evening when most people were there to see it. But on the EU realms, the first assault popped at 9 a.m. Meaning that by the time people who keep 
traditional hours, got home from work or school, they'd missed it for the day. And then just as they were getting their head around that, the next one obviously popped at 3am, which coincided with a server shutdown, all of which made people give a wry chuckle to themselves and laugh with each other about how this time, on the very first day of its implementation, it hadn't quite fitted around their schedule. So, you know, they got on with their day and they look forward to the next. No, it was a shit show. Obviously. That's right, folks. Sit down, because it is a double shit show week. In hindsight, I, I really should have warned you about this before we started. As if you didn't know anyway. If you don't like seeing real-life grown-up human beings completely losing their minds after one day of video game content, then run. Run now. And hide. Somewhere safe. Somewhere like Belgium. It's quiet in Belgium, the beer's good, and they've got a statue of a deer fucking another deer. Adding to the growing list of cancelled subs from players with jobs that aren't able to do Legion assaults. Blizzard is trying their best to kill WoW. WoW will die soon. You don't think just for one sec that people that work and can't be OP in time while players are there early and very early and for the invasions it is insane. I don't know why I'm posting this since I know you don't care. That's one 24 hour period. But remember these are on an 18 hour timer. So of course the next one popped at 9pm till 3am. And the next, 3pm to 9pm. So over the course of the first four assaults, there was an event up for you whatever hour of the day you usually play. Now, of course, that does not excuse issues with lag that people are experiencing, or of Prince Ferrandis not appearing to start the scenario after you'd finished the world questing in Azuna. That is not okay. But three assaults every two days? Every hour of the day covered over the course of a cycle of four assaults? Now, I don't want to be a dick here, okay? In fact, I'm not giving judgement on other opinions, okay? I'm just giving my own. But that actually sounds like quite good design to me. And I like that they're only six hours long, too. It creates a pleasing scramble when they pop that does make it feel like the whole player base is mobilising a defence of the aisle. And I like the assaults themselves. They're fun, even if they are not massive, massive content from the biggest ever patch in the world ever. On their own merits, they're really good. But that's just me. That's just my opinion. The real reason people were upset, of course, is that you needed to get those assaults done to complete the Pathfinder 2 achievement and unlock flying. And so the thought of having to miss any of them at all made them desperate that they might miss out. And I get that. So did Blizzard, who backtracked big time and removed the Legion Assault requirement from the Pathfinder, meaning, ladies and gentlemen, that flying is here. Just like that. Now, you can fly in Legion right now. There are people who already are, and there is nothing stopping you. Congratulations, go for it. How is your Legion full rep coming? Like I say, I'm trying very hard not to give an opinion on this. So instead, I'm just gonna ask a favor. If you are one of those people that reacted badly about the timings of the Legion Assault, saying how it was broken and it was bad design and it would stop you from getting your Pathfinder achievement, do me this favor. Just play normally, gather your Legion Full rep and do assaults when they pop. And if you get your Legion Full rep and unlock flying before you've completed all four assaults, let us know in the comments below, because then this change benefited you, and that's great. But if you get your Legion Assault achievement before you get all of the rep to unlock flying, will you accept that maybe, just maybe, you slightly overreacted? Everton. An extra special big fuck you to all the drama this week because it was so all-consuming, so distracting, and generally hilarious that I meant a lot of things went under the radar that really didn't deserve to go under the radar. Things like the Arathi Basin Winter Wonderland PvP brawl, which by all accounts is really, really good. Seriously, people love it. And since Arathi Basin is pretty much the only PvP map that Taliesin will actually play, we were really looking forward to this. We haven't played it. And March of the Tadpoles, a micro-holiday in Berean Tundra where you adopt a baby murloc, like Bubbles, who lives inside a bubble. I mean, there are others you can adopt, but none of the others live in a bubble and is called Bubbles, so why would you even bother? Did I have time to adopt Bubbles, who lives inside a bubble? No, I did not. We didn't have time for cute baby murlocs because we were too busy dealing with horrifying, terrifying fell murlocs with wings. Bubbles is still an orphan because of you, forum drama. There will be no presents for Bubbles this Christmas, there will be no presents for any of the orphans, and it's all your fault. So yeah, you've missed March of the Tadpoles, but at least you have till reset to try out Arathi Basin. Also up right now are the Soul Takers, possibly the most annoying world boss to reach in the whole of Legion, but vital if you're a Frost DK who still hasn't got your hidden artifact appearance. Go get it now, because let's be honest, you didn't get the new one from the Mage Tower, did you? It's not your fault, it was hard. 
and class changes continue to be announced for the next patch, which will hit before Tomb of Sargeras opens. The latest to get the attention are Destruction Warlock and Guardian Druids, but we'll be making proper video guides on all these changes when the patch gets formally announced, as always. You're still thinking of bubbles, aren't you? Me too. Oh, it's fair to say, that was some drama Ooh. right there Ooh in that episode. Um, so much <laughs> so that we decided we needed to really, really lighten the mood yeah. a bit at the end of this episode. We would have loved to have shown you some uh, footage of the March of the Tadpoles. We're going to uh, start a new section in this show. It might be regular, depending on how many we find. Please send in your suggestions. But it is our new World of Warcraft lookalikes. <laughs> What, what, are we, what do you mean, Talia? So well, some people in the world of Warcraft yes. look like other people. Oh. So, for example, this week's uh, entry comes from the new World of Warcraft Chronicle, Volume 2 book, which, by the way, Very is nice. fucking awesome. It's pretty good. We never did a it? chance to do a proper review of this, but I actually enjoyed this more than the first one. Did you know? Yeah, I really liked it because mm. it's more little stories mm. rather than grand sweeping things you know and it's really interesting and it, it fits in with all the games and my favourite thing about this book is I think the the, the amazing drawings oh, the drawings in this book are fucking incredible like this awesome this. one of the escape Love from Stormwind and stuff like that that's so cool right and I guess because they're all characters that you know from the games and like you pick up on their stories absolutely it's a yeah. little more exciting sometimes than like once upon a time the universe was created and which is pretty cool this so. one as well this is so fantasy that's my favourite that's like probably my favourite Warcraft picture yeah, of all yeah. time who are the good guys and who are the bad guys <laughs> yeah you'll never know um, but anyway on to the lookalike <laughs> now I sometimes have trouble saying this name um, but my f absolute favourite picture in the entire book is this one which is our heroes going into the dark portal. Right, do you uh, recognise that? Yeah, from, exactly, like, that's from the loading, loading screen. Screens. I love how they've just added that to this yeah, picture. Yeah. It's really good. We've got Khadgar, new Khadgar. Oh, very new Back Khadgar. in time, so Silvery showing, yeah, yeah, yeah that's how he was always supposed to look, as nice. they said. And we've got, um, uh, who's this here? <laughs> Is that uh, Illyria? Yeah, that's Illyria. Oh. Um, that's, that's her. She's and got good abs. here's Illyria's boyfriend. Oh, Terralion. 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 Oh, phew, I'm glad you said it, not me. <laughs> Terralion. And Terralion is our World of Warcraft lookalike this week. We're going to put this up on the screen as well. Because as you can see, Terralion looks exactly like Gordon Ramsay, the foul-mouthed British chef. No. We're not joking. He looks so much like Gordon Ramsay. It's mostly just the sheer rage on yeah. his face. When where I... we were browsing through this and we were like, hold on a second. Holy fuck. Gordon Ramsay <laughs> doesn't only cook a mean steak. He also pretty much saved Azeroth from certain destruction. So, I mean, that that's a good thing to have. Yeah. Um, and so we were thinking of things that Turalyon yeah. might be saying yeah. at this y point. Yeah. And I thought he might be saying, that portal is so green, Miss Piggy wants to fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, light save you. You call that judgment? My grandma could cast a better judgment and she's dead. <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> fucked me on the starters, you fucked me on the dark portal, and you're a twat with the desserts. <laughs> um, if you have any more Terralli and Gordon Ramsay quotes, please, please, please uh, put them in the comments below. And if you have any more lookalikes, please put those uh, in the comments yeah, below because that can go frankly, from, like, that's the only one we've got. Yeah. We're going to so need can, some more. Yeah. So it can be in the game, it can be in the books, it can be like other Warcraft ephemera or yeah. pictures or whatever, just send them to us and That'd we will so we will make jokes about yeah. it. We will that. make a special point of going through the comments of this video <laughs> yeah. looking for those. So thank you very yeah. much. Oh, I feel much better now. Oh, me too. I was a bit stressed before, but now <laughs> ooh, I am, it's out. It's out. It's all good. Um, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the Weekly Reset and a special extra big thank you to all of our amazing patrons who give their real life money to make this video happen. Um, the, your um, behind the scenes making our video is coming I promise we've been working on it. it's been a super busy week oh yeah uh, IRL oh, yeah. for us and we'll be next week as well but uh, we do have a very special announcement to be making uh, to our patrons with that new video as well so um, yeah it's uh, it's actually gonna be quite good it's quite a big thing yeah, so thank you for joining us if you did enjoy the video you can like it if you like and if you didn't like it Downvote the shit out of it and remember my name is Haruma Red X and I'm Sophia Orlena Nah. I'm not who we were right I haven't got my artifact not. thing. That's how you can tell. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, until next time, from me, Taliesin. And me, Evertel. Cheerio. <laughs>